About 74,000 years ago, that was the Toba eruption, the big volcano in Sumatra. And from genetic reanalysis, you can demonstrate that at that time, the entire human race consisted of just a few hundred individuals only. So extinction was absolutely near. We go on. So somehow Homo sapiens survived when you go, and then a miracle happens, you know. About 11,000 years ago, the climate becomes absolutely stable. This is what we call the Holocene, and it is something like a climate paradise. And this gave rise to civilization through agriculture, the so-called Neolithic Revolution. It could only happen in an absolutely stable climate. Today, we try everything to change that again. The insulation, there's nothing we can do about it. The second is CO2. And CO2 was waxing and waning, the atmospheric concentration, driven by natural forces, of course. But when humankind started to create civilization, this factor is dominated by our civilization. And that is the fundamental change in the game. What you see here is uh, in Ice Age times, the concentration of CO2 just varied between 180 and 280 parts per million. But this is what happened due to the burning of fossil fuels. And you see, over the last 10,000 years, there's a spike. And just last year, we hit the critical threshold of 400 parts per million, which is some 45% above the natural level. And everybody who works in complex systems can easily imagine that if you hit a fragile complex system by a big hammer like this, there will be some response to that. So you see, even with two degrees warming, we may collapse the Greenland ice sheet. But beyond two degrees, it's like an ever denser array of stop signs. And you just run into it. Yeah? And do we really want to overrun all these stop signs? And that's precisely why you should try to limit global mean temperature rise to two degrees. So what can we do about it? You, of course, will discuss that. I'm a scientist. I cannot tell you. But we had some encouraging signs in Schloss Elmar recently. Two degrees was confirmed. And decarbonization of the world economy during this century was sort of uh, formulated as a vision, which is a very important message. Yeah? Because in Paris at the COP21, I hope that somewhere in the text, this full decarbonization of the world economy will show up. And there are many examples, of course, that could be done. Let me mention that 80% of the fossil fuel reserves have to be left in the ground. That is what some people call the carbon bubble, uh, which is a major challenge for finance. If the East Antarctic ice sheet would be molten down, you would have an additional sea level rise of 50 meters. 50. So if you add up all the contributions, once you go run over all these uh, stop signs, it's a sea level rise of 70 meters, 7 uh, on the planet. Uh. So probably Berlin. OK, I'm, I'm not. Uh, speculating about it. And finally, the last in that is uh, the permafrost, uh, the methane outgassing of Siberia and Alaska, for example. And finally, the summer sea ice, but that wouldn't matter anymore, if, if uh, the winter sea ice, if even the winter sea ice would be gone, because there probably wouldn't be a lot of traffic in the polar sea anymore.